All right, good morning. Um, just kind of wanted to, uh, to show some stuff. Uh, what I've done is, uh, right now, um, uh, the, the batteries are in an absorb. It's uh, 29.7. Um, I had it set for 29.6. So I'm going to have to do some adjustment. But what I've got is I've got 6.4 amps is is what, what's kind of coming in to, to make the batteries happy. But, um, and I've, I'm down to zero. I'm, I'm back at 100%. 100 state of charge already i don't know it's like about uh what, nine o'clock or something in the morning um back at 100 percent state of charge and i've got 6.6 .6 amps coming in and i still have uh from what i'm using i still have 1.5456 yeah 56 amps that's that's charging now i've got um the 24 volt um converter on 24 to uh 12 volt um, I've got the fusion on. Um, I've hooked up the 12 volt, the 12 volt um, IDTV. Um, that's going, and I've got um, and the computer is on. So I've got the, the LED screen, plus I've got the Mac Mini, and will these run off uh, USB power? Um, so anyway, I'm 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 living very very comfortable here. Um, on that so and again I've just got a, a 90 amp hour bank right now so but again this is just daytime so uh, you know I've got other other stuff I got the engine room lights on and stuff but uh, that's not too bad because um, you're just switching over to, to LED lighting uh, LED backlit uh, TVs uh, this is not using too much power um, this is only about I think this is probably what's consuming the most power. Um, that is, I think it's uh, 120 watts, 180 watts. I'd, I'd have to look at, at the Mac Mini. And, uh, but other than that, it's I'm pretty happy in what my what I had thought. My um, oh, again, uh, the, the refrigerator is off right now. The refrigerator is off, so it would be higher if the refrigerator was on. But um, I've went and I'm, I'm just going to change the the timer. Doesn't seem to be working, so I'm going to go buy a new one. So I took that out. So actually, it's just unplugged. But anyway, um, without the refrigerator, I think that's a uh, that's pretty good. Kind of makes me happy. All right, guys, just wanted to show that. Be good. Be safe. Be well. Bye bye. Well, <laughs> greetings from Hong Kong. Uh, I hope everybody had a very merry Christmas. Hope Santa Claus gave you all kinds of goodies, and especially paying off credit card bills. <laughs> well, anyway, um, over this Christmas holiday here, uh, the weather's been pretty crappy and raining, so um, haven't done much out on the bow on the boat or anything. Been uh, just kind of digging out a lot of hardware that I have that I want to be putting into the boat, and one is right here. This is the LPG uh, tankless water heater. Uh, it's 12 liters per minute um, hot water and um, if you can see I've got two leads right here. Um, here's my LPG but these two leads um, come to a connector there and I've got them they run down into the engine room and on a two amp fuse uh, inline fuse I've got it connected right to the positive post and the uh, negative uh, side of the shunt so I can monitor it's, it's how much power it consumes and that I've got LPG hooked up I've got water just a hose to it and as you can see I've got a shower head and just the other night I took a shower well um, our ambient temperature here is about at nighttime uh, over this Christmas period here it's been about 50 51 degrees Fahrenheit so it hasn't been the warmest for me. You know, I'm used to, uh, like, 90 degrees. But anyway, so it's a little chilly, but I actually took a shower out here. Um, kind of standing below it here. Uh, not many people could see me there, but the boat across the way could see a naked Allen. But, you know, the majority of the time, uh, speaking from experience, 99% everybody around here is 99% naked or, or intoxicated, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, I say that with love, though. 
Uh, but anyway, I did take a shower, and it was pretty nice. It was nice and warm, nice and toasty water. Um, but anyway, um, it works. But now I've got uh, this 24-volt 24 24-volt 24 DC is for my auto ignition. Um, so most of them use AC, or they will have like a D-sized battery that's in it. And I just I want direct. Um, and usually they have like the AC power to it because the blower. Well, this is all 24 volt DC because this is a 24 volt DC exhaust blower. Um, now, well, now that I have it hooked up, I mean, I, I bought this from the factory. I had it made to what I wanted and that. And again, 12 liters per minute. And here I'm able to adjust my gas flow. Um, I'm able to adjust and restrict um, the water flow. Um, into the unit, and I've got my winter and summer settings, so winter, higher flame, summer kind of restricts the flame. Oh, but now I have this, but now what happens is the air that's around it, and be it in a cabinet or wherever it is, air comes in from here, goes into the combustion area, and then it, the, the blower forces it out. Well, I wasn't really thinking, and now that I have this, and I have it under operation, and where I, I'd like to put it behind the refrigerator or in a, behind an access panel in the bathroom somewhere. Um, what I want to do is get the like the sealed unit where it has the um, um, the exhaust pipe is got it's got it's two pipes in one, so the outside pipe is fresh air is coming into the unit, then the center pipe is your exhaust out. Um, so then that way the air comes in, goes into the combustion chamber, and then goes out. Because now I, I will not put this into an engine room, even though it's all diesel. There is no petrol, there's no gasoline, um, no petrol products whatsoever other than diesel in there. So ignition protection is not a major concern. It's always a concern, but not a major concern uh, with just the diesel engines. Uh, but I would never put that in the engine room. Uh, so... Um, but my thing is, is because I'm going to be using DC air conditioners, my little squiddy or the big fish, um, that I'm going to be putting into the V-berth, and if this is up in that area, then I don't want that to be sucking in any of the cold air and that, blowing that out, or if it's wintertime and I'm heating the air in there, I don't want it to be taking out any of the hot air either. So I'd like to have that all sealed, and I'm behind the access panel I can get to, to my settings. Now, my water pump, my fresh water pump on, that comes from my water tanks is 4.3 gallons per minute. This is 12 liters per minute, and that's approximately 3.1 gallons per minute. So when I do get the system in and get things piped up, I may have to manifold so I can um, regulate um, different water lines off of the manifold to, to keep it a balanced system. And that because of the water pressure, I, again, I'm able to restrict water flow in that here as well. So, so we'll have to see how that goes because you know 4.3 and 3.1, and that you still want to keep everything balanced, even though if I ha even though I have the accumulator. So we'll have to see how it goes once I once I install it. But I'm definitely on Monday going to be contacting the factory that made this. It's about it's about getting the sealed unit where the fresh air comes in and the exhaust goes out the same pipe because <laughs> that I think that that is the efficient unit that I'm looking for to do what I want it to do uh, more of a uh, more uh, an even more sealed combustion uh, chamber for it but still all again 24 volt now the same factory that that makes this they make uh, your exhaust hoods for above your cooktop surfaces and that and also the LPG um, stovetop burners. So I'm going to talk to them about getting all that because, you know, it's, again, they, this 316L stainless and the powder coating is nice, and again, because of the salt water. have to make it as much marine, marine proof um, as possible for on the boat. So we'll see what I can get from them. And, uh, and again, on Monday, I'll, I'll be able to um, contact Calb um, uh, China Aviation Lithium Battery Company about seeing because they have a warehouse here in Hong Kong. So see about 
seeing what they have in stock that we can get before the first of the year. If I can get, if it's within my budget, if it's within the budget, um, then I'll get um, eight or 16 cells. But if not, um, if it's outside the budget, then I'll, again, I'll go with the lead acid uh, affordability. Because I've got a lot more stuff to put in here, I can always upgrade batteries later. So, all right, but now that's, that's kind of there, and so that's what I've been working on over the Christmas holiday, as well as going and tying up some loose ends, which is uh, this cabinet, uh, getting the cabinet here. Now, this is the door, and I've got the latches on it. Um, they're on the back. Again, it's not hinged because the whole door comes off. So I've scuffed this up, and, that, and I've scuffed it and cleaned it, and then I've put on a 15% thinned um, varnish, and then now just this morning I put on the um, straight from the can full strength, um, a full coat over the top of it. I don't think I need a third coat because I did not strip it all the way back down to the wood. I kind of wanted it to kind of match what I had here because I don't, I don't believe I'm going to need to strip that down. It's still in pretty good nick. And that, so kind of get it so it matches. But I have gone around this. Um, I've got two coats again on this. I need to build up layers on the front here because this is new wood. Then on the wood on the back here, if I can get some layers up, then I can scuff this down with um, whatever grit I'll go with. So I'm to scuff it up. And then I just need to probably put over um, one thin coat and then a top full coat, and it should be fine. And that, but now I've, I've changed the wood here. This wood's all been done. So again, I go in every every joint. I I force silica flex into it, and I, you know I taped it off. And and one of the things is, is I I am probably a little bit too anal about that, but it's just for prevention because again it's a wood boat, and again termites. You know it's we're it's we're exi coexisting with nature, and termites are part of the system here. They are a creature that we will never get rid of, like a cockroach. So anyway, it just kind of prevents them from getting in to some places. They do find their way in. Of course they do, and that's why I put out bait traps and that to keep to keep that down. So so hopefully all the silcaflex, you know, I've got the silcaflex that goes across here. I mean, all the joints and everything in here is polyester urethane. This will be silcaflexed as well, and that will silcaflex around that just to prevent them from getting in, but but that's all done. Um, I've got, you can see I've got my little latches. They're brass. I've got stainless steel balls in there with a stainless steel spring. So they go in and stick in. you got to really pull them out. Um, so that that's all done. I've got um, LED light up here. And that, as you can see, there's LED lighting. And that, so when I take the cover off, this micro switch will open up and turns on the LED. So I'll always have light. And, I, and I've been kind of thinking, what should I do with this space here? You know, storage. But now this is a Hong Kong-built um, boat. And when it was first christened, when it was first entered into the water, again, everyone here um, f that's on the water um, thanks and praises Tin Hao. Now, she is the princess of the sea. Whereas uh, in the Western world, we've got uh, Neptune, the, the king of the sea. Well, again, we have a king of the sea here, too, but uh, Tin Hao, the princess of the sea, is the one that everyone pr that pretty much praises. She kind of looks over us on the water. And if I had a Tin Hao statue in there, a small little, I don't know, probably about eight inch tall Tin Hao statue, and then the red LED light above it, because you always got to have the red light above it. That's good luck. I had a little Tin Hao in there, fit with the, the whole theme of this, you know, Hong Kong, these Chinese style. Um, wooden vessel and, that, and to kind of watch over us keep us safe and you got to have tin how right above the, the the manual fire pump and that's red as well so I just think that's a good thing and that's going to be my little way of, of of keeping the Chinese you know heritage to the boat but because again tin how is a major part of the waters in in China and Hong Kong so I'm going to keep that so, but anyway, that's what's going. So I got two coats. Two coats are on here. It's looking good. Oh, um, down here. Um, I because in China, uh, Christmas is not a recognized holiday um, in the communist religion or com communist country China, and that. So the People's uh, Republic of China 
um, has factories open on the 25th. So I went and I sent out some emails, made some phone calls. And, I, and what it was is now these I paid $125 each for, U.S. Well, I've sent out emails talking. I said, now this is the Morning Star. Here's how their pinout is, and this is how their systems work. Sent them some uh, PNG drawings and stuff like that. After talking to a few engineers, and uh, the one guy says, oh, yeah, yeah we, we got that. That's perfect. No problem. It'll, it'll work right with it. And, uh, and so they emailed me a quotation. And, uh, and they're six U.S. dollars each if you buy less than ten. Six dollars each versus 125. These have all the certificates, and they're, they're oh my God, yes, they're supposed to work. USA government says they will. But anyway, cheapo Charlie, six dollars. I'm going with cheapo Charlie. Um, from experience, I'm finding out that stuff works a lot better than all this FCC and all these other certificates. So, but that's what's kind of going on. Now, after the first of the year, I hope that now that I've got, now that I have um, all of the old varnish has been, we used heat, um, the heat, and it's taken off all the old, all the old varnish. Now I've just got to get off the oxidation, sand them down in that. Um, once they're all sanded down, I'm going to tape it off and get Silcaflex in around here. Uh, a few little places here. I've got to uh, chisel out some wood, get some little teak blocks in there with some of that teak epoxy and that, uh, and silica flex around it, make it watertight, sand it. Now, it's been about 60 days, and you can see the, the teak's already oxidizing again. And, uh, but at least it's oxidizing evenly, and I like that. And so, But hopefully within uh, the next week, I get this done, take care of the inside gunnel, um, varnish and sealing that up do this so hopefully in the next week or so i get this all finished and then i can start moving up on the top and i like to get the two wind turbines up there oh get the stainless steel guy over that's one thing i can't do myself he's gonna have to bend it in a big pipe bender and and do some welding for the the two 600 watt five blade wind turbines get those up in january um hope you get this We'll have the other batteries in and that, and so then if I get the other wind turbine in, I'll have to make another cabinet as well for, uh, excuse me, another cabinet because I'm going to have up on top, there's going to be more solar panels and also I'll need another um, dump load for that. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, um, speak, oh, um, another morning star. Speaking of that, I've, I will, on a very, very happy note, um, with all my frustration with trying to get um, this MS view to, to do things, I found uh, some software where on my Mac, um, on my Mac here, I can emulate or I can run a Windows program on my Mac without using Boot Camp or a full copy of Windows whatever uh, version of Windows that's out now. Um, without doing all that, I found some software that doesn't take up much space. In that. And what we've got is I have MS View. Now, this is um, only Windows-based program. Uh, but I'm using this other software, so now this kind of opens. And poof! Looky there. What we have is we have MS View on my Mac. Now, if I do a search for my devices, poof! We have the MPPT controller right there. And there it is. It's red. Poof! It's green. So now I can go over to my logs. Let's go over to my logs. Let's make a new display here. And let's go. Let's do our amp hour daily. Poof! Look at that. That's going, and it's giving me all my data. Now, again, the video just before this kind of showed you that I'm actually putting charge into my battery from what I'm using. I'm monitoring. I, I know what I use. I know what I need. And, well, right now I need bigger batteries. But MS View is actually working on my Mac. And uh, so the thing is, is now I've got... There is no information that I can find clearly, and I hope somebody could point me in the right direction, of um, HTML 
uh, they say in their books and their communication PDF and all that and networking PDF that you can go and using HTML bring in like three or four different controllers have them all on display and I could probably even using JavaScript or even uh, PHP coding and that I'd be able to go and make my own graphs on a website which I want to do which which is my goal but but at least right now I can still get information on my Mac from MS View. And uh, a friend of mine uh, in a boat over uh, a few rows from here, um, I've got, this is his TS60 PWM. This is going to, for his 12 volt, his 12 volt system, what I've done is I connected to my Mac, I connected this uh, USB to serial connector, plugged it into that, um, and then all I did is I've got my 24 volt to 12 volt because that's going to be charging 12 volts. So I connected, I just had an output to that controller and that, and I used the, the setup wizard on my Mac, MS View TriStar setup wizard on my Mac and I programmed that. So now when he connects it to his MPPT controller, which is number one, um, for his 24-volt uh, system, and that his uh, remote uh, monitor um, will not have any communication issues. Everything is set up, but I've done it on a Mac, so I've been able to do it and successfully, and it, it works every time I log on. So, which is a good thing. So, it's, it can be used on a Mac, and life is good. All right, so I hope everyone has a very, very, very wonderful New Year's Eve and wishing everyone a happy 2015. And I definitely hope that 2015 is as good as 2014 has been to the big foot here. So, all right, guys, be good, be safe, be well, and have a happy New Year. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.